Hello. See, it is technically afternoon. Four minutes. Anyway, so I haven't been on in a while, and I had a lot of sessions lately. Sorry, my dog started barking. Um, but anyway, so there's a few ladies, and um, despite my advice, they came in with those things I told them not to do, stuff like that. So I thought it would be best to share um, some do not do tips before your session, just in case. Um, so number one is don't starve yourself before your session. Um, what happens is a lot of people, they want to look skinnier before their session. And so instead of you know, pacing themselves, they straight up starve themselves for the day or even the day before, things like that. What happens is during, you know, all these poses I'm putting you in, you start feeling really faint, you know, and it really doesn't change the pictures. Like you starving yourself, maybe to you, you look in the mirror and you're like, I can see that two inches difference. But frankly, with the editing that I do and stuff, I do an ever, like, I don't like make you lose 200 pounds, but I make you like, you know, 20 pounds light or something like that. Just, just enough that, that you see yourself and you feel good about it. You know what I mean? Um, and so like if, if that two inches is really bugging you, like I'm going to take care of that anyway, you know, don't worry about starving yourself before your session. You're really just hurting yourself. And in the end, you're not going to feel empowered during your session. You're going to think about food constantly. Instead of taking your time and enjoying this luxury experience, all you're going to be thinking about is, are we done yet? I want to go eat something. I'm going to eat a whole burger. I'm so starving. It's like, why? Why are you starving? Like, obviously, you shouldn't, you know, completely stuff yourself and be bloated and stuff before your session. But, you know, we don't, we start hair and makeup at 10 a.m. typically, unless there's some reason why not to. But we usually start our, our uh, beauty session at um, 10 a.m. And then we're ready to shoot by noon. And if you don't eat something around like 8 or 9 before you get there, by the time your session rolls around, you are going to be absolutely starving. So I definitely recommend to eat a healthy and not super heavy breakfast. And then... Um, during your session, we will have some snacks for you. But the thing is, I provide the snacks because I'm also providing wine. <laughs> so I don't want you leaving all tipsy or anything. Um, but the, the snacks aren't really to fill you up. They're just supposed to help you because you're drinking wine. So I just want people to be aware, like, you should not be starving yourself. That's not okay, and that's really not going to help your pictures. It's just going to make you feel icky. And I don't want you feeling icky during your session. The whole point is to make you feel really good about yourself. So don't starve yourself. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It doesn't help. It really doesn't help. Not one bit. Um, so then the other thing about trying to be skinny, you know, before your session. So a lot of people, you know, we book months in advance. So what will happen is ladies, they'll think, this is my goal now. I have a goal for when my session is coming up to get thinner before my session. Um, but what ends up happening is they forget or, you know, life happens too busy and pretty soon you realize, Oh, my session's in a month. Oh my God. I was supposed to lose, you know, all that weight. <laughs> and then, um, and then they panic workout. So what ends up happening is, is if you're working out every single day consistently, then your skin will naturally tighten as you're losing the weight. But if you panic workout and you work out really, really hard for just like a couple of days to a month, what ends up happening is the fat drops really quick, but your skin didn't have time to catch up. And so instead, your skin, when you come in, it looks deflated. It doesn't look tight and natural. And you end up not look, liking the way you look. It's like, I can, you know, slim you down a little bit, but when there's tons of extra skin, like... If you have a request for me to edit something out, I will. But frankly, like the whole point of this is to empower you and make you feel good about your body, you know, not make you feel worse. And I can't do much with the skin. So like as, as much as I know you, you know, you work out because you're trying to be ready for your session. The best thing is if you haven't worked out leading up to it, then don't. 
do not panic work out. If you panic work out, you're actually just becoming your own enemy here. Um, so panic working out is never a good idea. You're not going to lose 50 pounds in a week. Okay? And even if you did, your skin cannot physically catch up. It just can't. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay? So just let it be. Okay? You are gorgeous the way you are. And I'm going to show you that. Okay? All right. So another thing that I find a little irritating is when I tell people, do not spray tan. No matter how good it looks in person, no matter how good your spray tan person is, cameras pick up orange hues. So your tan, your spray tan may look natural in person. Maybe it does. But it never looks natural in the pictures. Never. Every single person that comes in with a spray tan, I have to tone down the orange tones in the picture to make you look like a normal tan. In which case, then the rest of the picture will be missing those orange hues that, like, say, the walls had. You know what I mean? And so suddenly you're like, huh, I feel like those walls look a little different than when they did in person. And it's because I'm trying to select just your skin and tone down those oranges. But typically, you know, my, my program will, like, catch all the orange tones, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's just so frustrating I have to do extra editing because people thought that the spray tan would help and it doesn't. It just makes the pictures worse. Um, and uh, then the other issue with spray tan is no matter how long it's been on you like to dry or whatever, I have had ladies that came in with spray tan and it rubs off on my furniture. Okay. And then I have to do extra cleaning. So that's extra money out of my pocket cleaning because of the spray tan or self-tanner or whatever you use. Um, and I, I, for those who haven't booked with me before, um, all the furniture in my studio is white. It's all white and um, like even the, there's a shag carpet in uh, my new space and it's, it's like a white shag throw rug thing in the middle in front of the fireplace. Um, all that stuff is white. So if you wear a spray tan thing in there and it rubs off on my stuff, I'm getting to the point, like, I've had it happen enough that I'm thinking about, like, charging a fee for anybody who comes in with a spray tan and gets stuff on my furniture because that's not cool. I mean, what if you invited somebody over to your house and, you know, they, like, wiped their boogers or something on your furniture? Would you be bad? <laughs> you know? I'm just thinking of something random that somebody could wipe. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of those things where it's... It doesn't help you, and it only hinders me. So, please don't do it. Um, okay. So, wearing stuff. Anything, pretty much. If you wear things that don't fit, then I have to Photoshop them to fit you. Whether they're too big or they're too small. Some people, they order stuff online, you know, because they're trying to save a buck. And instead of getting something that, you know, according to the size chart, like I just bought those TikTok leggings and according to their size chart, I should have been a small, even though I would have thought I'd been like a medium or a large. And I was right. I ended up being like, I, I, sh I needed like a medium or a large because, uh, because they were, they were like, they were supposed to be stretchy, but I could not get them. I could barely get them over my knees. So. <laughs> That was not going over my ass. <laughs> but anyway, so like things online, things that are purchased online, um, and it's, it's hard to help that work out, especially if you're ordering it last minute. So one, try to order things if you're ordering them online. Order them ahead of time. Don't order them last minute. Be like, oh, yeah, I needed an extra outfit for that shoot coming up next week. I got to order it and do two-day shipping. And then you get it, and it ends up not fitting. And then you're like, well, maybe she can do something about it. But, like, technically I can. But, again, it's just adding on to my workload. And then I can't dedicate that time to my other clients. Like, it's really taking away from other people when I have to focus on all these other things that are really not necessary. 
um, things that I've done before in the past is is make tight things look not so tight on you. I've done um, things that were too big that I wasn't able to clamp in person. I ended up having to try to shrink them in certain spots to make it look like it fit you. Um, I've had people that came in with, they're like, these are such cute shoes, but they're like three sizes too big for me. And so then when we do these shots and the heels, like you can see their physical heel, you know, and then the heel of their shoe and it's sticking up this much, then I have to try to morph the shoe and your foot to connect. So it's not obvious in the pictures you're wearing shoes that are too, too big for you. So please try to make sure that everything that you're bringing is fitting. Um, and if you don't have anything that fits, still can't find anything that you like that fits, that makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel sexy, let's go nude. You know, I've got tons of fur throws. I've got tons of jewelry. I've got all these sheer um, cloths. They're like like curtains, you know, those like sheer see-through curtains. And I've got tons of them in tons of different colors. They look so elegant in pictures. I've got so much, so many props and stuff that we can do. And you don't have to just bring in lingerie either, like, like bring in like a, a really big men's button down shirt or something. Stuff like that can be really sexy. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that you don't have to go all out with lingerie to make this work. And, um, getting things last minute, never a good idea. Um, always make sure it fits, please. Um, let's see here. Well, I guess I can throw this point in there while I'm talking about last minute stuff. So don't do anything last minute. Um, it's like some women find something last minute to order for their session and it either turns out not to fit, it has a weird issue with it, it doesn't arrive in time. And, and even when you do grab something last minute from the store itself, maybe it looked like it fit great in the dressing room, you know, with their mirrors, their special mirrors, and then you get it home and it ends up not fitting the way that you thought it fit or maybe you washed it and it's shrunk or there's all sorts of weird issues like that so don't ever grab anything last minute because you need time to be able to correct the issue if there is an issue with it okay don't do anything last minute um but yeah i've had i had this lady she bought this or no her boyfriend he found out she was doing a session she was trying to surprise him but he found out and so she decided or he decided to surprise her in return with um, a set of lingerie that he liked. It wasn't her style at all. She didn't like it, but because he liked it, she was like, I'm going to bring it and wear it to the session. But because she didn't like it, she didn't feel comfortable in it, and she didn't really, like, throw it on, like, before the session. She just kind of took it from him, brought it to the session, put it on. She looked at herself in the mirror, and she was like, I don't feel comfortable in this. I was like, let's not shoot in it then. She's like, no, I have to. I have to get pictures, um, you know, with for my boyfriend in this outfit. And there ended up only being like, I think it was like two or three images that were usable from the set of images I took with that outfit. And the reason was because she looked awkward wearing the outfit in the camera. Because it, how you feel is expressed not only on your face, but just your body language in general. And it, she was following my posing great, but it was like this moment that she felt uncomfortable in her outfit. It just didn't work. The photos just didn't work. Um, don't buy anything last minute and try, try to make sure you try everything on, pick out all of the issues, decide really if this is what you want to go with. Um, and as far as outfits fits go i always tell people we tr we try to go for um roughly four to five looks or outfits or whatever like i say looks because it's not just outfits like you could be nude and that's a look um but at any rate so anything like that um sorry my brain just plopped i'm getting ready to go camping some blah blah blah, blah. um but anyway, so we, we do about four to five outfits, um, or four or five looks, and uh, that's typically what we can squeeze in. But I always tell people, try to bring, you know, like eight, eight outfits that you have, and that way, when we're actually in person, you know, you can try them on, and, and we can go over everything and decide what actually goes together. Because in the end, once you have your images finished, 
we're going to be designing your luxury album with them. So say you have an outfit with a bright pink lingerie, okay? And then you have lingerie with, um, what clashes with pink? I'm, I'm so tired right now. <laughs> Can't think of anything. Um, but, you know, just like some other color. So then you put these pictures in an album together and they don't flow. You realize these outfits, like I thought, you know, they looked cute individually, but once you actually have them together spread out inside an album, all you're thinking is, mm, these don't really fit. I'm kind of upset with, with this and you can't really fix it because it's what you brought, you know? Um, so try to color coordinate as best you can. And if you, um, you know, have odd things here and there, then that's fine. But just keep in mind that in the end, this is your album, your luxury album. And, you know, you have to be happy with the flow of it. And if you're, you know, not happy, then there's, there's nothing I can do because it was your outfit choice, you know? Um, so I try to help you as best I can. I do a styling consultation before your session, which is optional. You don't have to do it, but I mean, it, I, I think it's best to do it because that way, you know, we can go over what you have. We can talk about what I have. Um, we can go over like what you're thinking about doing. Um, we can go over all your ideas and stuff like that. So that's the best time to deal with that, um, is the styling consultation. So just make sure you get everything you can ready. Um, before then, and we will go over it and make sure that we've got everything down. Um, let's see here. Don't feel like you have to buy something for your session. That's the other thing about, um, about outfits. A lot of women, they go and splurge like $500 on lingerie before their session, and then they don't wear half of it for the session itself. Um, I, I don't know how many people I've had that ended up buying stuff and it didn't fit or something, but regardless of the fit itself, you know, all the money that you spent on the lingerie just for the shoot, like, are you actually going to wear that later? Because if you are, that's great. I've honestly, I love wearing lingerie, like wearing lingerie and heels just makes me feel like a rock star for some reason. Um, like that chick from, um, what is her, what is her name? Cherry Pop, that Cherry Pop song. Uh, The Runaways. Anyway, so... So, uh, yeah, just try, try not to go all out with the lingerie. Like if you have stuff, great. If you want to go shopping, great, you know, get a couple more things, but don't buy $500 worth of lingerie right before your session. Because if you didn't have that stuff before and you're only just now getting it, the likelihood that you'll actually wear those other than the session is low and then you have all this laundry you can't return because because it's underwear and stuff you can't return it to the store and so you're you're out five hundred dollars for stuff that you won't ever wear again so try not to do that um i mean obviously i think that it's a great excuse to go shopping and get yourself a new set of lingerie um but i also think that people really underestimate other things you can bring besides lingerie you know, you can bring regular clothing, like you can bring a tank top, like this tank top right here. I've done, I have a couple, if you look at my, um, my boudoir photos I took of myself, I wear this shirt and a couple of pictures, um, tank tops, uh, sweaters, like big baggy sweaters, um, button down shirts work great. Um, just rummage through your, if you have like a boyfriend or something like rummage through your, your, your dudes, um, clothing thing that's what I do <laughs> my boyfriend so anyway yeah go rummage through his closet rummage through your closet um pick out some stuff besides lingerie that you'd like to do another thing is um is uh any kind of special interests that you or or your partner has um or um hobbies stuff like that like say if you really like to paint Bring, bring a color paint in that matches a set of lingerie that you're doing. We can do, like, some handprints on the butt, you know? I think that's really cute. Um, uh, or if, like, you're really into Harry Potter, bring, you know, some some stuff from Gryffindor or whatever house that you, that you associate with. And uh, things like that, you know, just we can make it really fun. Like, I had a lady, um, her husband is a mechanic, and so she wanted to do something for him, but she didn't really have any props and she thought about grabbing one of his wrenches or something, but then she forgot on her way out. I just so happened to have uh, jumper cables in my truck that day. 
And so I was like, ooh, I got some jumper cables. And so we pulled those out and we did some really great shots with the jumper cables. And I actually did some composite work and cut out the, the ceiling and the wall um, next to the brick wall. That was with my old studio. And um, I replaced it with a sky. And then I made um, the light on the ceiling look like a light that was coming off of the brick wall. So it looked like a building with a light coming off of it, like an alleyway. And then I, I put a car uh, in the picture. So it looks like she's outdoors, even though she's not. And I think it worked so, so great. I honestly, I want to get a big canvas of it to put in the new space. Um, but anyway, I digress. So, um, yeah, try not to overdo it with the lingerie. Try to bring in other things, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, if you're going to bring a guest to the session, that is totally fine. But don't bring someone who's going to be negative and complain. Okay? If somebody wants to come and they're super supportive and they're like, yeah, girl, get it. You know what I mean? They're going to be uplifting and stuff like that. Yeah. Bring them along. Like, that's our party. But I've had somebody bring in somebody and as I'm posing them, she's criticizing how the chick looks. And usually I'm having to remind people like, no, no worries. Like if this pose feels weird, I swear to you, it looks great in pictures. Usually I'm saying that to the client, but instead I had to turn around and I had to say that to the lady. I had to be like, excuse me. Like, I know this looks strange, but it looks gorgeous in pictures. Like, please don't interrupt this process. And that brings a negative vibe, not only on her part, but then on my part, because then I have to tell her that into the studio, any kind of negative energy into the studio during your session is it's not going to be as fun as it's supposed to be. Like boudoir sessions are so much fun. I get to play dress up and stuff and have all these pictures and, and like have snacks and wine. It's a great girl's day. But once you bring somebody negative in, then it gets really weird. Like you can bring your boyfriend. You want to bring your boyfriend? Hell, if you want to turn it into a couple session, like as long as he's not getting hair and makeup, it's no extra charge to do a couple session. I charge the same. Um, if they want hair and makeup, then it's extra cause I got to pay the hair and makeup person. But, but yeah, um, but yeah, so don't bring anybody negative, make sure that they're going to be 100% positive. And I don't just mean picking somebody that's positive, but I mean like you need to have a talk with them before you walk into my studio and be like, you need to make sure that you are going to be a fine smelling flower and you know what I mean? Like don't, don't bring that negative energy into the space. Um, we do try to discourage people coming in for your session right now because of the pandemic. But in the end, I wear a mask. You know, we, we do all the precautions that the CDC recommends. Um, there's absolutely no reason other than just a, you know, precaution to bring somebody in. So try not to, but if you really want to, like, go have, go for it. Like, we can have a party with them. I've had some ladies that brought in some, like, their best friends and stuff, and uh, we ended up laughing the majority of the time. It was, it was actually kind of hard to, to, to stop for a second and, and get the laughing out of the way. But, I mean, that makes it more fun, honestly. I'd rather have, you know, hiccups during the, the session because we're laughing rather than any kind of negative energy. So just try to remember that. Um, let's see here. So bringing a person, uh, don't wing it. We prepare for our sessions. Like this experience is definitely a must. So, I mean, we try to make sure that, that the lingerie you're bringing is going to be on point. Um, and, and the theme, you know, whatever you want to go with stuff like that. Um, but just don't do anything last minute. You know, I, I a lot of people, they'll try to be like, Oh, ah, I forgot to do my nails. And so they try to slap on some nail polish really quick, but then they change and do all sorts of things, run their hand through their hair by accident. And they get there and their nails are all effed up. So like, try not to do stuff like that last minute. Make sure that you're planning those ahead of time. Um, I definitely recommend getting a mani-pedi before your session. If you would like, I can schedule that with my beauty team. So instead of just hair and makeup, you can do um, nails too, because they do an amazing job with all of that. Um, it's not 
included right now, but I was thinking about upgrading to add that to the packages. But at any rate, whatever you decide to do with your nails, make sure you're doing something with your nails. Like personally, like I don't know if you can see these dirty paws of mine. It's like there's like skin hanging off of them and I've got like white marks from zinc deficiency and all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah, like I've, I, with my own pictures, I didn't do my, my nails beforehand before I did my own pictures and I regretted it, you know? Cause if you're like doing this sexy picture and you look so gorgeous, this professional makeup and you're going like this, ah, uh, you know, finger. And then you look at your finger and it's all, it's got like dirt under the nail and it's all like bitten down, you know, cause you've been chewing on it and, and your skin's coming off around it and stuff like that. Like it kind of ruins the aesthetic of the picture, you know? And I, I straight up, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to Photoshop nail polish. You'd be like, uh, you know, I forgot to, to paint my nails. Can you just throw some nail polish on my, my nails during the Photoshop uh, part of it? <sighs> Technically, I can. But do you know how much extra work that is? No, you don't. It's so much extra work. I'm not going to do that. Like, you could have just painted your nails beforehand. <laughs> Oh, same thing with shaving. That's another thing. Don't forget to shave. I mean, if you're all natural like that, like I go sometimes a month without shaving my pits and stuff. So like, I'm not shy about it. Like, I'm not going to judge you if you don't shave. Like it's everybody's personal choice. But the thing is, if you prefer to be shaved and you forget to shave and then you're like, oh, can you just edit out that hair? Be like, that is so much extra work for me. And it's not just like you think. Like, for you, it's shaving one leg. But for me, if I have to remove the hair from your legs every single picture and I do 70-plus images of you, that's like me shaving your legs 70 times. Imagine having to shave your legs 70 times in one sitting. Yeah, you've never done it because it sucks. There's no physical way that you can shave your legs 70 times in one sitting. <laughs> But I have to do it. I gotta shave your legs seventy times in one sitting. So anyway, um, and the hoo ha. Don't forget to shave your hoo ha. A lot of people, you know, they'll they'll be in a rush or something. They'll get the pits. They'll get their legs run out of time. Forget the hoo ha. And then when we do some poses, you may be able to see some whiskers sticking out from the panty line and things like that. So if you want to be hairless for your shoot, don't rely on me to remove the hair. Okay. You need to make sure that you take care of yourself before your session. When you come to the session, I expect you to have already shaved, be freshly showered, like your hair should be clean. I, my beauty team shouldn't be putting their hands into greasy dandruffy hair, okay? Like I had a lady come to a session one time and she, um, this was back when I allowed people to uh, choose if they wanted to do hair and makeup or not. Now I make it a mandatory thing because this affects your pictures. Like once you see yourself in the pictures and you, you know, like you forgot to do makeup or you decided you didn't want to do makeup and then you, you were like, mm, I don't like how I look. I'd be like, that's kind of because you didn't want to go with the hair and makeup. So I now make it a mandatory thing. I don't allow people to take that off to save a buck because it's, it's affecting the quality. So I always make sure people are um, doing all the necessary steps. So make sure you shower. Take, take a nice bath. You know, go, like, I see Melissa. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> like, um, I think you have bath bombs or something, right? I know you've got nails. I was just talking about nails. I don't know if you heard that. But, um, but yeah, if you, uh, you can do stuff with your nails without having to go to a place and, you know, get hundreds of dollars on your nails. Like, uh, my friend Lucy on here, she, I don't know if you see her comment with the, uh, with all the, the four hearts here, Melissa, um, she works with, um, what's the, uh, as soon as I'm about to say a name of something, I forget. It just pops right out of my head. Um, color street. She does color street nails. Those are really great. They, they're just, those like, it's like stick on nail polish. They're like stickers. But they last a really long time. So hit up my girlfriend, Moosey here and, um, get you some nails that'll make it a lot easier to deal with rather than having to remember to make an appointment before your session in time. Um, so make sure your, your nails are done. 
They look good. Make sure you are clean. Go take a bath. Grab some bath bombs. You know, just relax. This is this is a whole self love pampering experience. So why not you know splurge and go for a full bath? Bath. Um, I expect you to be shaven, clean, uh, nails done, all that kind of stuff. I want you to be ready. You know, and don't don't come into the studio with like your makeup already done and stuff because. Then that adds extra work to my makeup team, too, because then they've got to wipe off all your makeup to put their makeup on. Please trust them. Please trust them. They are such amazing professionals. Like, I have never, ever had a single person tell me they didn't like their look. My team is so good. Ugh, Nicole and stuff. Man, they are so good with hair and makeup. It's ridiculous. So, please, for the love of God, trust them. Coming clean and ready to go. Let's see here. What else do I got on my list? So don't panic work out. Don't do things last minute. No winging it. Um, wear things that fit. No spray tan. Don't buy anything last minute. Don't starve yourself. Don't freak yourself out. <laughs> this is a big one, actually. A lot of people don't think about this. So, um... As your session date starts getting closer and closer, you start feeling more self-conscious, which clouds your mind. And it just becomes easy to lose focus on why you're doing this in the first place. You know, what What was your why? It's, uh, it's usually they say something like, oh, I was doing it for a present for my boyfriend. But the truth is you wanted to do this. You thought about it. You thought this would be fun. And you decided to do this for you. He's just an excuse. That's the facts. Or, or she. She or he. Whoever your partner is. They're just, they're just an excuse. The fact is you wanted to do this. You did. You booked the session. So don't, don't let things like that freak you out. Um, a lot of people, they, they think about, you know, I, I haven't, you know, worked out in a while. I'm feeling flabby. I'm feeling bloated. I'm on my period. There are countless excuses not to do this. But in the end, um, you, you, did, you decided to do this for a reason. Trust yourself. You know, that the, the freak out part, as you start getting closer and closer, it's almost like Christmas. You know, you're excited, but you're also super nervous and... And because you haven't gotten to know me yet, you know, I'm a stranger. And so you, you feel like, oh my God, I'm going to get naked in front of a stranger. And you start freaking out. It happens all the time. I had a lady, you know, she was like 10 minutes late and I give her a call and she was like, I don't know. I just, I just started thinking about it and I started panicking and I don't know. I haven't left yet. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, now my beauty team, they're going to be behind and it's this big, it's a freak out thing. If you feel like you're losing your nerve, call me. You have my phone number. You know, if like, if you've booked with me, you have my phone number. You have my phone number. You have my email. You can call me or text me. You've got me on Facebook. You can talk to me. I will talk you off that ledge. Okay. Because this is such a fun experience. And those panicky nerves you feel just from that instant of fear, it's you don't let it outweigh the excitement of actually seeing yourself in these pictures. Like you're going to look so gorgeous. I kid you not. So you just, just try to make sure that you're not freaking yourself out. Okay. You need to be pumped. I don't want you, you know, sitting there thinking about getting naked alone with someone in a room. You know what I mean? That panic. <laughs> don't do that. So just, I want you watching uplifting girly movies and I want you making a, a playlist, a power girl playlist, you know, for, for the boss babe you are, stuff like that. Anything to pump you up. You need to get pumped, you know. Um, something that I've, I've had people do before is do a 30-second dance party all by yourself and just just get into the groove. So every time you start panicking a little, I want you to start dancing. And it sounds super silly. And I'm sure if somebody sees you doing this, it's it's going to be a riot. But it really helps. It makes you smile. You know, another thing um, that helps, and this is a photography trick. So 
if you're feeling a little stiff or something like that and you're you're not feeling like smiling and stuff because you're too nervous if you fake laugh long enough it tricks your your brain because you feel so ridiculous doing it it tricks your brain into laughing for real and so if I get somebody to be like, ha, 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 in the session, then pretty soon they're like, because <laughs> it's so funny. It's just so ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I get a lot of people to get out of their own heads by making them fake it until they make it, that kind of thing. Um, so don't freak yourself out. Try to do anything you can to get out of your head space and just let it happen. Um, so some of the other things I have here is don't be a stranger. You know, and that goes back to um, contacting me, like, if you're feeling nervous. So, like, connect with me. You know what I mean? Like, this is a bonding experience. You know, I, I, I hang out with my clients all the time. Like, I just hung out with one. We went to um, N3 Tap House, that firehouse on West Colorado. We went there with a couple other ladies, and we all just had some drinks. You guys are welcome to join anytime, by the way. We usually meet, like, every other Thursday at 5. Um, for a couple of drinks just to hang out. Just bitch about our lives, you know. <laughs> didn't do the dishes again. Stuff like that. So, um, if you want to hang out, you want to connect with me, you want to keep in touch, do it. I'm a person. Okay? Um, connect with me. You know, we've got, you've got me on Instagram. You've got me on, um, Facebook. I'm, I'm on Nextdoor and Alignable and LinkedIn and I've got my phone and emails and blah, blah, blah. All sorts of means of contacting. So don't be a stranger. You know, this this whole journey that you're doing with your boudoir session, it's meant to empower you. It's it's meant to, to, you know, make you feel good about yourself. And I don't want you feeling like you're doing it all alone. You know, I'm supposed to help you through this journey. I want to walk with you. I want to hear your story. I want to get to know you as a person. Okay. Just like I want you to get to know me as a person. That's why I'm whole, I'm doing this whole live right now. Because I want you to feel comfortable with me. I want you to understand that you're not alone. You know, I'm right here. You can talk to me. You can come to me anytime. I'm down. Let's go get some wine at the Sweet Elephant or something. <laughs> so, yeah, don't be a stranger. Connect with me. Okay? I love to chat. Um, and the last thing, which also ties into that, um, don't forget to join our group. Obviously, I'm doing this live in the group, so that doesn't make sense to you. But personally, I'm going to be taking this recording, and I'm going to be putting it into a blog along with everything I wrote down about what not to do before your session. So that way, um, anybody else who's watching this later can can feel it too, okay? Um, get some good advice. So just to review one more time before we're all done here. So don't be a stranger. Connect with me. Don't freak yourself out. Don't starve yourself before your session. Don't panic work out. Don't spray tan. Please, for the love of God, don't spray tan. Ugh. Don't buy anything last minute. Don't wear anything. Don't bring anything that doesn't fit. Okay? Uh, don't feel like you have to buy a ton of lingerie for your session, okay? Don't wing anything. We need to plan every part of this out, okay? You like I ask you a bunch of questions during the consultation, and then during our styling consultation, I ask you a bunch more questions. And it's because I'm trying to make sure that that we're both on the same page for every tiny bit of this, okay? I want to know exactly what jewelry you're wearing. I want to know what colors your outfits are. I want to know every little bit. I want to know what you like in a picture. I know I want to know what your style is, what you would describe your vibe to be, okay? Um, let's see here. Don't matter where we're If you're going to bring a guest, make sure to bring somebody who's positive. Do not bring a negative Nelly. Um, yeah. That's it. That's what I got. So, my beautiful ladies, to sum up, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to go camping. Okay. Love to get to know you. Talk to you soon.